Okay, so again, thank you so much for chatting with me. I'm just super excited to talk to you about this book and also just a bunch of different topics in general. So just to kind of kick things off, would you mind talking just a bit about yourself and your journey as an author? Sure. Um, thank you so much for having me and having me um, here today. It's super nice to get a chance to chat with you. Um, so I always say my journey to become an author has been like a 30 year journey. Um, it's the only thing I ever wanted to do. I really wanted to be an author when I was a kid. I'm actually dyslexic though. So I never thought I was going to be smart enough to be an author. So it took me a really, really long time to get brave enough to even try and write. Um, and, uh, and I ended up going to graduate school for children's literature. Cause I, I've always loved picture books, children's books. It's always just kind of been a thing I've loved so much. And when I found out you could actually go to graduate school and um, study children's literature, I was like, this is like heaven. I love this. So, um, so I went to Holland University. Um, I got my MFA there. But I think when things really started to kick more into high gear was towards the end of my programming when I started interning at Andrea Brown Literary Agency. Um, and that just really helped me so much and also going to writing conferences. Um, and then that through that I kind of figured out how to finish a manuscript, how to submit, um, how to kind of get into publishing, you know, like try to find a, an agent, an editor, or how to get a book deal. So that, that was a long winding explanation for how I got there. <laughs> But you're here. That's all that matters. Um, yeah. oh, sorry if I keep swatting. I don't know if you have like these little gnats in your house right now, but Never. everybody, everybody in Tucson, everybody that I talk to has these little tiny gnats just like swarming their houses. So I may be like swatting my face um, to get these little guys away from me. Uh, so oh, apologies no. for that. No. But in regards to your journey, like you got here, like that's kind of what the, the paths to publishing series that we've been doing. Um, through Pine Reads has kind of been about is that there's just no one way to to get to that point. It just matters that you're you eventually do get there, which is great. Um, and is a great segue into kind of the release of your second middle grade novel, uh, which is Better with Butter, that's coming out July 20th from Scholastic Press. So for those who aren't yet familiar with this book, would you mind briefly just summarizing or describing the story and characters? Sure. So um, Better With Butter is about 12 year old Marvel who is struggling with um, a generalized anxiety disorder. And um, one day she rescues a fainting goat and um, she decides that that fainting goat needs to be her emotional support animal at school. And um, that of course doesn't necessarily go well because children go to school, not really goats. So it's just <laughs> sort of her journey to figure um, that out and also her journey to um, deal with her generalized anxiety. So there's like so much to talk about with this book. It's really amazing. Um, just to start, what inspired you to write this story and how did that vision kind of develop over time? And I also read on your website that you grew up around animals. So how did that influence Better With Butter? I think that's the really interesting thing about every novel or everything I think someone writes so much of your life like you don't know how it shows up in a novel but it all just sort of falls into the novel um I did I had a pet gro goat growing up and um I always wanted to put a goat in a story and I kept tucking a goat into all these different stories that I was writing um and at the same time, after I finished The Spirit with Cactail County, I also really wanted to write about someone who was struggling with anxiety. And I was having a conversation with my editor one day and I kept saying, I really wanna write a story about a goat. And, um, and I was like, I really wanna write about anxiety. And she's like, why don't you just put those two things together? <laughs> and I was like, that is such a good idea. And I went home and um, I just sort of started thinking about it. I was thinking about a goat. And then I have always kind of had this fascination with, felt really bad for fainting goats actually. And it just sort of evolved from there. I started playing around with it. So um, Butter in many different forms, she's been in a lot of my, um, my drafts in many different forms, but she finally found her own story. <laughs> 
I, I love that. I mean, those two things, like before you had said that, I wouldn't even know that they were kind of two separate entities that you eventually merged because they work so well together. It, it, it really feels like fated that you were supposed to, to bring them together in this book because um, the anxiety and the emotional uh, support animal being a goat, just there, it's so adorable. It's such a great concept. Um, and so I just, I just love that story. So you kind of hinted at it a little bit in, in your response, but since Better With Butter is an exploration of anxiety and May, which is going to be when this uh, video goes up, just so happens to be Mental Health Awareness Month, how did you approach Marvel's character arc? And did you always plan to include anxiety disorder as part of her journey specifically? Um, yes. So at the at the start of the book, I always... Um, she would she always had anxiety and really the whole book was kind of built around her anxiety um it's interesting because i didn't even realize when i first started writing how familiar i was with generalized anxiety i knew i had my own anxiety and i also um one of my children also really struggles with anxiety but it wasn't until writing that i that that all those parts of the journey sort of came together. Um, the part parts where you're also parenting a child with anxiety and also being that child, I was that child with anxiety and then also being a parent. So um, the family components were, were super important to me um, and better with butter and that the support that she has, because I think that one of the things that about Marvel's journey and anxiety is I didn't want her to be healed necessarily because I feel like we are who we are and you know we can um we can manage some of the things that we struggle with but I didn't want her to necessarily be magically cured because I don't think that I think that is not um a true picture of how people um deal with mental illness or mental health usually usually it stays with you throughout your life and has peaks and valleys or highs and lows. And at different times, it can be a little more troubling than others. And I really wanted Marvel to be a kid who um, had supports around her, but just had to learn how to accept them for herself. Um, that was one of my favorite parts of this book. And that is the perfect segue into my next question which is that this book isn't just about Marvel kind of practicing personal techniques to manage her anxiety. It's also about her finding a strong support network um, with those that are around her. So for instance, I, I love seeing her bond with her father develop, um, definitely shed a few tears as we kind of see them grow closer together, um, as well as the new friendships that she forms at school, which I love as well. So besides Marvel and Butter, obviously, um, because they're kind of the main duo in this book, who was your other like kind of favorite relationship to write about and why? Um, that is a tough question because I, I really, I loved all, I really fell in love. Like this was such a fun book to write in so many, and just every aspect of it was just a joy from beginning to end. Um, I think probably the funnest relationship for me to write was the relationship between Marvel and her mom, because I felt like her mom kind of had that um, job of being kind of the go-to person, the one that sort of had to keep, you know, the hard stuff together for Marvel. And I just felt like sometimes their interaction would just crack me up because, you know, Marvel would say things and then her mom's trying to like, you know, cheer her on and um, and Marvel's sort of like, uh, not really having any of it. So it was really, those were really fun interactions to write, I felt like. Yeah, I loved their scenes. Um, I was 100% like Marvel in the way where I was the kid who, I, I have two siblings, but I was always the sibling who was trying to fake being sick so that they didn't have to go to school. Um, and my mom, who just happens to be a teacher, was always like, no, you, you have to go to school. Like, if you're not sick, like, you can't stay home. So I loved their kind of banter and um, just how her mom just really supports and loves her, um, but is also there to, to kind of call Marvel on some things, I guess, like as any parent would. Um, and so I, I love them. I loved their family dynamic. Grief is great. I loved, they have some great interactions too. Um, so just loved all of it. 
Oh, um, so moving on, as someone who's had generalized anxiety for most of their life, Better With Butter truly is a book that I wish had existed when I was young. So if you could say one thing to every kid with anxiety who picks up this book, what would it be? And do you actually have any favorite children's books that feature anxiety representation? Um, I think the one thing I would say to any kid who picks up this book about anxiety is um, that, you know, sometimes it truly is like the hardest things that we deal with are the things in our own minds and our own heads. And that, you know, just getting up sometimes in the morning or just dealing with that every day, like I have so much respect and admiration for people who struggle and still just keep going because that's what I see so much. Like I see it in my own kids and um, when they are just, and, and my kids' friends who struggle with certain things is they just, they, they're just like butter. Like she falls down and they just keep getting up. And that takes a really special type of courage and strength that I think sometimes we forget. Um, we forget to acknowledge when we're trying to deal with these struggles or we're living with someone that we love who struggles because because no one who has anxiety wants to have anxiety, you know? One of the things that I loved about Marvel's character in the beginning is that there's several times when people in her life will tell her essentially, like, this isn't verbatim, but like, just, just shut it off kind of thing with your anxiety. And, and she is like, I can't, I can't do that. Like, this isn't something that I'm, it's not a lifestyle choice. Exactly. It's, it's like, you know, this is part of like my brain chemistry. This is part of who I am. Um, so it's not so easy always to control like what's going to trigger your anxiety. When is it going to kind of manifest itself? Um, and I just love seeing her arc and how much she grows as a character from the beginning to that last moment in the book, which I won't spoil for readers, but it's very, very powerful um, to see her grow like that, I guess. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I mean, I, I really... I really wanted um, to, you know, to normalize and also encourage like with this book, like I, I really thought that Marvel's, um, the way Marvel just kept plugging away and kept trying to do better. And, um, and she's really fighting a battle, you know, and, um, and she thinks she's not brave and she thinks she's not strong and she thinks she's not, um, doing the right things when she's doing all of the right things. Right. And she's just trying to take it, you know, one step at a time, which is just super inspiring. And I think a lot of readers are going to connect with that. Um, so kind of switching gears just a little bit. One thing that really snuck up on me in this book that I liked, but I liked is how it subverts expectations, particularly with the character of Jamie. Um, who serves as kind of the, one of the main antagonists. He's the, the school bully, essentially, in, in Marvel's life. Um, and since the bully archetype is pervasive in children's literature, how did you go about humanizing and developing Jamie's character while also holding him accountable for his actions? Oh my gosh, thank you so much. That's so kind of you to say. I think with Jamie, I think one of the things was that I just loved him. I loved his character. And even though he's a little bit of, um, or he's not very nice in the beginning, um, I really wanted to find the reason for that, for why he's doing that. And I genuinely loved him. I thought he was actually, um, like there was a lot underneath the surface for him. So I think um, just trying to have empathy, like as a writer, trying to have empathy for all your characters and make them as nuanced as possible, I think is, is the way to try and balance them. And I think the interesting thing is when you write a book and you write characters, you kind of fall in love because you spend so much time with each character. You kind of fall in love with every character that you write, even the bad characters. Um, and it always kind of surprises me, like in uh, The Spirit of Cactail County, my first book, um, the aunt, um, Auntie Geraldine, she's not a very kind character. And when kids will say like, oh, Auntie Geraldine made me so mad. And I'm like, oh, really? I kind of love Auntie Geraldine. <laughs> you just spend so much time with them that you sort of, you just kind of fall in love with them. So I'm glad that that came through with Jamie because I didn't really want him to be one dimensional and just the, 
you know, bad guy, um, like with a twirling mustache. Walking around <laughs> with yeah. And you definitely, I, you definitely accomplished that because we slowly kind of peel back his layers, which is really rewarding by the end of the book to, even though he's a side character, you know, we definitely get a sense of, of who he is and his motivations. Um, so as much as Better With Butter is heartfelt, it's also super funny. I laughed out loud multiple times while reading. Um, yeah. Marvel's ambiguous lost creature flyer uh, had me laughing for days because I could really just imagine myself doing that as like a 12 year old, um, not wanting to give away this animal that I'd find, uh, found, but trying to like do what my mom says. Um, and so on that note, what was your favorite comedic moment to write in Better With Butter? I think almost any scene where Marvel was either talking to Jamie or talking to Principal Hawks, those were both of my, like, those were always fun scenes to write because I think those are the two people in Marvel's life who are just not very tolerant of her. And so the banter back and forth of the interactions, especially um, the one scene in the beginning where Marvel's getting ready to go out on stage to do her initial presentation and her interaction with, um, with um, Jamie was, I felt, was just super fun. Yeah, and I loved seeing that scene mirrored at the end as well with a later scene between them. It was, there's just so many, there's, this book is very circular. Like I can just, I love the structure of this book and how there are just so many, you, you're dealing with like a lot of different subplots, but all of them feel super rewarding and satisfying by the end. We, I really feel like we come for full circle in a lot of ways, not just with, you know, Marvel and but Butter's relationship. Um, so there's like so much going on in this book oh. that I just love. Thank you so much. Of course. So Better With Butter is set in the Bay Area, which also happens to be where you live. So what was it like bringing your home to the page? And are there any specific elements to, that are specific to the Bay Area that you're excited for fellow uh, locals to read? Yeah, um, it, was, it was really fun to write about an area where I'm currently living now. Um, my first book was set where I grew up in Florida. So um, that had a very nostalgic feel for me, but this was sort of like very right now, right here. And I, we have moved to the Bay Area and I love it here. It's so beautiful. And um, one of the places that I'm excited for locals to see is the Marin Headlands come into the book. This is one of my favorite areas. Um, and it's right on the cusp of the city, but you kind of take, uh, you know, you kind of go veer off the highway and all of a sudden you're in this just kind of open space, wild land. And it's a really special place. I highly recommend it you get a chance to come out to visit San Francisco. You'd love it. Yeah, I actually have never been to the Bay Area and I really, really want to go. It's on like one of my like top five places in the US that I really want to visit because it just seems so like diverse in terms of like the, the different like ecosystems you can maybe visit. And it just seems beautiful from the descriptions in the book. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very excited to one day, hopefully, hopefully visit. Yeah, it's a, it's a really nice place. I feel very lucky to be here, actually. So after writing a paranormal middle grade and your debut, The Spirit of Cattail County, what was it like switching to middle grade contemporary for Better With Butter? And if you had to choose, which is your favorite, ghosts or goats? <laughs> That's a super hard question. Um, I don't know that I could choose between goats or ghosts because I love them both equally. Um, I think one of the fun things about both books writing is really the world building because even though um, Better With Butter is contemporary and the spirit of Cactail County is sort of kind of, I don't even know if it really has a time stamp and it's like kind of this spooky mystery story. Um, but it's just building like a whole town and a whole world populated with people. So the world building and from that standpoint, I feel like they, they weren't very, they weren't very different um, in writing. And that's my favorite part about writing is building, you know, an entire world and these characters that I hope feel as real to people who are reading them as they do to me um, when I'm right putting them on the page. I love that. Um, yeah, it would be really hard for me to choose as well. I'm a huge like 
fan of ghosts. Like, I, I don't know. I just find like ghost mythology really interesting. And obviously goats are adorable. So it's, it's kind of an impossible question to, to choose between them. Um, I feel like there, I know there is a draft around here somewhere where there was actually a goat in the spirit of Cacto County. So <laughs> as I said, I've been trying to put a goat in something for a really long time. So um, it could have been ghosts and goats. Oh, maybe one day it will be, maybe in a future book. Who's to say? Who's to say? <laughs> so you're also a literary agent or a liter literary associate, excuse me, um, for executive agent Laura Renner at Andrea Brown Literary Agency, which you kind of talked about when you were um, talking about your background. And Andrea Brown um, is a top agency in children's and the white market, which I'm sure you know, but for anybody watching. Um, so what does a typical work day look like for you? And what do you enjoy most about working with this agency and team? Um, I think that what I, what is so great about it is there is no typical work day. I mean, it's just, every day is different. Um, every day is, um, I'm working on something else, um, which is super fun. And I'm mostly in a support, or I am in a support role for Laura. So I just kind of whatever, you know, she happens to need on an, any given day or time, um, I can kind of jump in and support that, which is, which is super fun, um, really engaging. But I think my favorite thing about um, working with Laura and um, the women at the agency is just the women at the agency. They are just wonderful and amazing. And um, I admire each and every one of them all for different reasons and they're they're just fantastic um and they're so knowledgeable collaborative and they just care so much about writers so it's really if it's just a great place to be sort of as my day job i'm super i just feel so lucky all the time and fortunate yeah that sounds amazing um and just i mean it just you guys have such a great vibe I feel like just from like your website and like talking getting to talk to like Paige Turlip myself and and working a little bit with um Jennifer Mark Soloway everybody just seems like such a positive enthusiastic person so it, it just really does seem like a great like environment and and team to work with they're they're really fabulous I mean I I can't speak highly enough and every time I write um, acknowledgements in the back of my book. I'm always um, speaking about them because I'm just feel so grateful that not only um, I just feel so grateful that I've had the opportunity to to um, know all of them and be in their sphere and it's just really empowering and and lovely and friendly. That really warms my heart. <laughs> <laughs> So I also read that you have a background as a television producer, which is super interesting because I'm also um, a film major yeah. technically. Um, so how does your experience in like other entertainment mediums like film or, or TV influence your work in publishing? Um, well, so because I am way, way older than you are, um, <laughs> I think my my experience in like TV or anything like that is very dated, um, but I think I think I'm a very visual person um, and I try, I think one of the ways that, you know, that idea of um, doing a set or like clearing your space. So, you know, what's in camera view and coming close up or going backing up um, and also telling stories. I think, I think all that training was super beneficial um, for writing books and telling stories, like kind of, if you think about it, sometimes I think about writing as a camera, like you zoom in, you zoom out, you set the stage. Um, so I think, yeah, I think I think all that does kind of play, play into the writing. And I find that kind of no matter what someone's background is, it's interesting how people have these journeys where they do all this disparate stuff. And then all of a sudden they come into a space where they're, it all makes so much sense where they are, even if they started out someplace wildly different than where they end up. I think it's pretty neat how um, our life kind of can drive us towards the right space if you kind of hold what you want to do in your heart. Yes, that I that's amazing advice and just wisdom. I totally agree with you. Um, and I agree that like, 
being like having that visual like element to, to better with butter specifically, it definitely comes through like in, in terms of like you were saying, like zooming in, zooming out, like, are we focusing in on someone's expression? Are we kind of more taking in the scene? Like it, it definitely has that kind of visual feel to it, like akin to, you know, a television show or, or a movie. So I always, I think I also gravitate towards books that are, that are more visual like that or cinematic maybe. Um, so yeah, I, I really love that about Better With Butter and I love that advice too, because um, I believe that as well. So kind of on the, in the vein of like advice, when it comes to insights for inspiring authors or really just anybody who wants to kind of break into publishing, what's the worst piece of advice you've ever received? And what's the best piece of advice? I don't know if I can think of one particularly worst piece of advice, but I would say in general, um, the worst advice you can get is that it's too hard or you're not good enough or you'll never make it. So, or there's only one way to do something. So I, those are the pieces of advice. I feel like in general, if someone tells you that there's one way to do something or you won't get there or that's a pipe dream, you know, what are you talking about? Um, those I would say are really terrible pieces of advice. Um, and then I guess to piggyback on that, I would say um, the piece of advice I would always give someone is just never give up. Like if it's something, if it, you really have to, I mean, it can take a, a while, you know, to break into anything that you wanna do, even if you wanna be, I don't know, a doctor or an artist, it doesn't always have to be something in the creative arts, but I feel like, I feel like if, my mom has always said, if you know what you wanna do, that's the easy part, uh, or sorry, getting there is the easy part. Knowing what you wanna do is the hard part. So once you know what you wanna do, um, just sticking to it uh, is really the best thing. I, I have a lot of friends who I went to grad school with and, the only people I see not writing books or doing what they want to do are kind of the ones who who took who stopped trying or decided maybe it wasn't that for them. Um, but you know, usually people if they stick to it, they find they find their story or they find their their direction. Well, I love that, and we see that like we kind of talked about with Marvel, where she just keeps rolling with the punches essentially, and until she succeeds or, or starts to to manage things in her life so I love that advice I think it's really important to it's it can seem like something that's said a lot but I think it's you can't overemphasize its importance like that that really is I think at the end of the day something that that is going to help you succeed is just to have that confidence and believe in yourself um yeah so I, I love that so much um, and it's super so, easy. Sorry, I was just going to no, say. No, 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 totally. It's so much easier said than done. Like, I think having confidence in yourself is not easy. And you should no. also give yourself a break on the days you don't feel like you have to. Just like, you know, go have some ice cream. It's okay. <laughs> Can come back. I love <laughs> Exactly. Take a break. Treat yourself when you need to. Um, yes, I think that rest is also um you know, that that's so important too, is knowing when to kind of step away and take some time for yourself um, before you kind of get back out there and start climbing that hill or, or whatever it is um, again. So I agree, totally. So as everyone well knows, the last year has been tumultuous to say the least. At this point, it's more like the last year and a half. But do you have any book recommendations for young readers who may be struggling through quarantine or are just kind of looking for something great to, to read? In other words, like what stories have helped you through the bleaker moments of the pandemic? Um, that is such a great question. I have to say I am an obsessive reader. I read all the time. Um, one of the books that I just really love, and I actually was going to have a copy, but I keep giving my copies away to people, um, <laughs> Red Task um, by Kelly Yang, which I think is just a great heartwarming story. And I think the wonderful thing about it is um, a sequel has come out and then there is a third one coming out. So I know for young readers, it's kind of like if they find a character they love to have that sequel is sort of nice because you can stick with it. Um, 
I also love Any Day With You by Mi Rapizio. So that is a really beautiful book. And she also has another book, The House That Lou Built, which I love. Um, and I am actually just started reading Alone. And I, um, and that's a story told in verse. And, but it is high adventure, which is just such a interesting, compelling, like page turning, like to read a, basically read a poem told in verse and it's a page turning novel. That's been really fun. Um, I could go on and on. I, there are so many books I love. I mean, I've never met, I really don't meet a book I don't like. So I, I love to read and middle grade is just my favorite of all genres. Well, I can also speak to front desk because I've read it and it, I read it in one setting because it was very hard to put down. And Mia Tang is <laughs> my personal hero. I love her so much. I haven't had the chance to read Three Keys yet, but I really, really, really want to. Um, and I also read Parachutes as well when that came out last yeah. year, um, which was just amazing. It was just uh, so, so good. Kelly Yang is, is one of my favorite writers. She just again and again proves that she's absolutely amazing as a storyteller and, and just as a person. So um, yeah, I would definitely recommend anything no. that she writes. She's brilliant. So, and I, I love everything she writes too. So it's, it's amazing. So I'm glad you read Parachutes too. It's actually on my, on my to be read, um, my TBR list. Uh, yes. Again, I don't, maybe it's just Kelly Yang, but I also read that in a night because it's, the pacing is just so great and it flips between their two POVs. And again, it's just really hard to put down. So it's, it's definitely uh, really amazing. So lastly, kind of wrapping up, what's next for you? Um, do you have anything coming down the pipeline? And uh, yeah, basically, do you have any forthcoming projects that you can speak about? Um, so I'm working on something right now. I, I don't know if it's in any sort of state that I can, <laughs> I can speak about it. Um, but I, I really hope to write a book about um, probably a girl. I, I really like girl characters, um, but a girl who's struggling with um, managing dyslexia and finding her kind of the, the place where she belongs in the world. So that's what I'm working on right now. I hope that um, I, well, you know, you never know about those things. So we'll have to see what my editor and my agent think. <laughs> but that's what I'm personally working on. That sounds really exciting. And I, I can't, I'm just excited for you. I can't wait to read it, you know, when it comes out, um, you know, at, yeah, that sounds amazing. I can't wait to, to see that book come to shelves and anything else that you write, honestly, you, oh. you've hooked me with Better With Butter forever. Um, I just, I love this book so much with all my heart. So thank you for writing it, honestly, is, is oh all gosh. I can really say. <laughs> thank you so much for reading it. I really appreciate you reading it and inviting me to speak with you today. I, it really means a lot to me. And also, um, yeah, it just means a lot to be here. 